those of you who do not know, I am Madeline Tyndall of Mr. Zelony's Period 7 GT American Government Class, and this is my current events documentary. But in all seriousness, my topic of research for this documentary is Syria, their internal affairs, and foreign policy. A lot of you have probably heard about the tension in Syria currently, but what is actually happening? And that is what I am here to tell you today, fellow classmates. First off, Syria is a small country bordering the Mediterranean right about here. As you can see, Syria borders Iraq, Lebanon, Israel, and Jordan, and Turkey. Now at the beginning of the year, I was attracted to this topic because I had seen it in the news, but I didn't actually know what was happening. Originally, I had thought of this topic as just a small outbreak against a corrupt system by a group of revolutionaries, but it's actually so much more complex than that. The situation in Syria officially started in 2011 and runs to the present. However, I'm going to trace this back further to 2000. In 2000, Hafez al-Assad died and is succeeded by his son Bashar al-Assad, which is the current president. Both father and son lead a oppressive system and have maintained stability through riots and other forms of dissent. When Bashar assumed power, he made some actions that provided hope that this would be the end of his father's authoritarian rule. However, he soon continued to imprison pro-reform activists and continued to deny civil liberties to the people of Syria, eliminating any of that pre-existing hope. He also continued the war in Lebanon until around 2005 and maintained bad relations with Israel. Tensions also began to arise with the U.S. during the Iraq war because Syria was suspected of creating chemical weapons and assisting Iraqi refugees, and from there the tensions have only escalated. Accusations have also been continuing to pour in from countries such as North Korea and Israel that um, Syria has been creating um, nuclear and chemical weapons of mass destruction. Through this, Assad has continued foreign policy measures with other nations such as Turkey, Iraq, and he has restored relations with Lebanon in 2010, five years after they had ended their conflict. However, after a brief period of international acceptance and stability from 2008 to mid-2010, the U.S. renews its sanctions against Syria, and in 2011, uprisings begin, demanding the release of those have, who have expressed dissent against the government and other political prisoners. As a result of the slaughter of many of these protesters, the Free Syrian Army forms, which is also referred to as the rebels, especially by the Syrian government, and the anti-Assad regime. Henceforth, the country has been engaged in a bloody civil war, including demonstrations such as this one, where a rebel cuts out the heart of a Syrian soldier. Other forms of violence include bombings, suicide bombings, chemical bombings, raids, assassinations, attacks of foreign aid, and several clashes of the two major armies. The death toll is currently above 150,000, and many of these bombings have been on civilian areas, taking the lives of innocent people. This state of war has forced the exodus over of over 2 million refugees to Egypt, Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq. In my first and fourth research entries, I looked at the involvement of the U.S. and Russia in the Syrian civil war. In 2013, as a response to the chemical attack on Gouda, the U.S. threatened Syria with an airstrike and other acts of war, but ultimately decided that we didn't want to head into another foreign war in the Middle East. 
One of the things that majorly influenced the backing out of Syria was that some of the actions of the Free Syrian Army were also considered controversial and inappropriate, such as the viral video of the brutal slaughter of a Syrian militant. Peace talks and interviews with al-Assad have been inconclusive because he had denied that Syria was producing chemical weapons. However, there was a chemical attack on Gouda by the government. Assad claims in the CBS interview with Charlie Rose that the government played no part in it and that the U.S. has no proof to their allegation that there was a use of chemical weapons on the Syrian civilians. This is about chemical warfare. Let's talk about that. Do you approve of the use of chemical warfare? What do you mean? The no. use of chemical, deadly chemical? Do I, do I think that we have to use it? No, do you think that it is an appropriate tool of war to use chemicals? The chemical? Yes. Uh, we are against any WMD, any weapons of mass destruction, whether chemical or nuclear. Do you consider chemical warfare equivalent to nuclear warfare? I don't know, we haven't tried either. Yeah, but then why do you have such a stockpile of chemical weapons? We don't discuss this issue in public because we never said that we have it and we never said that we don't have it. It's a Syrian issue, it's a military, military issue, issue we never discussed in public with anyone. Okay, what was the reality on August 21st? Uh, what happened in your judgment? We were not in the area where the, alle where the, where the alleged chemical attack was happened, as it alleged. We're not sure that anything happened. Because even at this date, you are not sure that chemical weapons, even though you have seen the videotape, even though you've seen the bodies, even though no, uh, your own officials no, have I been there. How can you talk about what happened if you don't have evidences? We only had video and we only have pictures and allegations. We're not there. Our forces, our police, our institutions, don't exist. Secretary uh, Kerry has said there is evidence that they saw rockets that fired from a, a region controlled by your forces into a region controlled by the rebels. Mm -hmm. uh, they have evidence from satellite photographs of that. Mm -hmm. uh, they have evidence of a, a, of a message that was intercepted about um, chemical weapons and, mm -hmm. and that soon thereafter there were other intercepted messages. So Secretary Kerry has presented what he concludes is conclusive evidence. No, he presented his confidence and he presented his convictions. It's not about, it's not about confidence, it's about evidence. The United, uh, sorry, the, the Russians have completely opposite evidence that the missiles were thrown from area where the rebels controlled. Kerry didn't even present any evidence. He talked we have evidence and he didn't present anything. Not yet, no, no, nothing so far. Well, the United not not, not single shred of evidence. Mm -hmm. I think sadness prevails in Syria now. We don't feel anything else but sadness because we have this killing every day, whether chemical or whether with, the, with any kind. It's not about how. We, we feel with it every day. But, but this was indiscriminate, and children were killed, and, and people who said goodbye to their children in the morning didn't see them and will never see them again. You mean uh, which, uh, which? In, in Ghouta. In Ghouta? Yes. That's the case every day in Syria. That's why we have to stop the killing. That's why we have to stop the killing. But we, you're not talking about evidence now, you're not talking about facts, we are talking about allegation. So we, we're not sure that if there's chemical weapon used and who used it. We cannot talk about virtual thing, we have to talk about... Shortly afterwards, however, the Syrian government admitted to possessing chemical weapons and OPCW found 1,300 tons of chemical weapons stored by the Syrian government. The OPCW stands for the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. In my fourth article, I found that although the U.S. May, had made an agreement with Russia to remove the chemical weapons from Syria by mid-2014, we have developed cold relationships with them because we suspect that they are supporting or are still supporting the Syrian government and fueling the same situation in Ukraine that we are seeing in Syria. Obama had said that in the involvement of Russia was worth nothing. However, my additional research proved otherwise. In one of my additional articles, I found that the Obama administration is attempting to form a democratic noose around Putin's Russia 
and that the competition of the two countries is like that of a Cold War chessboard. Most recently, al-Assad is holding an election similar to that in Ukraine for himself and two other pro-Assad candidates after having captured one of the last major rebel cities in Syria. The U.S. has, in turn, condemned these actions as a shame to democracy, as they have done in Ukraine. In my second and third research entries, I looked at the actions of the Free Syrian Army versus the actions of the Syrian government. In my second article, the Free Syrian Army assassinated the chief of military actions, J Gen Jama Jama. In this article, the author martyred Jama, while another portrayed him much less generously. This was important because it showed two of the major different viewpoints taken by Syrians and others on the issue. My third article focused on the bombing of Aleppo, Syria's second city. Aleppo is currently um, held by three different divisions, one being the Free Syrian Army, the other being in part the um, Assad regime, and the third part being the Kurds, which is a small religious sect um, of Arabs living in northern Syria. The bombing was performed by the Syrian government and was one of the worst bombings in um, the past couple of months. More than 50 people were killed in this attack, and of the 22 that were killed initially, 14 were children. However, fatalities continued to add up afterwards from the refugees trying to survive in the camps after the attack. Additional brutalities by the Syrian government include a recently discovered slaughter of over 110 men. Each body had been shot in the head while their hands had been bound with plastic ties, and each body was pushed into the, a river where civilians discovered the bodies floating down the waterway. Another example is of an airstrike victim, a young boy who had been crushed to death by a collapsing house after a bombing. This gave me a better understanding of the topic because I recognized the extremes of violence that each side would inflict upon the other. And the fact that these victims were uh, men and women and children shows how merciless and cruel the government has become towards these citizens. Now that I've completed all of my research, I have had um, a complete evolution of my perspective. As I had said at the beginning, originally I had viewed this situation as a small outbreak against a corrupt system, but now I recognize that it is way more. The reality is that it is one of an interconnected group of power struggles in the Middle Eastern area now, such as um, this can be related to incidents that occurred in Egypt, Libya, and um, other places most recently. It's um, being referred to as the push for democracy. Some conclusions that I can draw about my topic now are that this is most definitely not the end of what we will be seeing in Syria. I believe that the power struggle and war will continue until either the Syrian, the Free Syrian Army wins by itself or the US or UN intervene to um, create a better system. Uh, the US and UN have many reasons to intervene. One, the largest one being that um, we are very opposed to uh, having authoritarian governments in the world, um, since we are all pro-democracy. The reason that this issue is important to us is that the issue in Syria comes from the repression of human rights by an authoritarian government structure. As I was saying, as Americans, we, um, are devoted to spreading democracy and protecting human rights, which are two of our largest foreign policy goals. And as individuals, we should care because we are devoted to 
helping the less fortunate and standing for up for what we believe is right, which is a moral obligation that all of us, or most of us have. And the question occurring in Syria, the far democracy that the Syrian government is feigning, greatly upset us as Americans. Although the Syrian civil war may not see an end for some time now, the resolution that we seek could be greatly helped by the involvement of other countries or organizations such as the U.S. or the U.N. Once again, this is Madeline Tyndall, signing off. Back to you, Mr. Zeloni.